To the Ghana's longest serving chairperson of the Electoral Commission is warning of dire consequences if the Ghana card is used as sole evidence of identification for the continuous registration exercise. The Electoral Commission, through a proposed public elections regulations, CI 2021, is making it mandatory for uh, prospective voters who applies for registration as a voter to provide as evidence of identification the national identification card issued by the National Identification Authority. Well, that proposal is before Parliament, and here are excerpts of that proposal to you. Uh, first of all, indicating the, re the requirements that are necessary um, for the registration exercise, which the Electoral Commission has laid before Parliament, making some claims and talking about the need for um, registrants to apply using the Ghana card. It's contained in the constitutional instrument, uh, which uh, the Electoral Commission has put before Parliament. We'll bring that to you shortly and tell you about the proposals being made by the EC. So here you have it. First of all, talking about uh, the session relating to registration of voters and the qualification for that continuous registration exercise. Well, we do know that portions of the proposal being made by the Electoral Commission is that a person one uh, is entitled to have the name of that person included in the register of voters uh, of an electoral area. If that person is first of all a citizen of Ghana, 18 years of age and, uh, and above, also of sound mind, then we know that you need to be a resident, ordinarily uh, a resident in any of the electoral areas that you're registering at, and you uh, must not be prohibited by any law enforced from registering uh, as a voter. These are the conditions set out in the law, but if you go to section two of that um, uh, requirements, um, particularly pointing out to portions relating to registration of voters qualified for registration. Uh, the EC is also proposing that for the purpose of paragraph D, which we talked about earlier, a person who's confined in a penal um, uh, institution located in an electoral area is actually uh, a resident, uh, it must make sure that he's a resident in that area. And then a person who now wants to register or who wants to apply for registration as a voter shall provide as evidence of identification the national identification card which is the ghana card many of you refer to as uh, and that must be issued by the national identification authority point three is what we are um, really keeping up with because there's a lot of reaction greeting that decision by the electoral commission to stick to the ghana card as proof of evidence of identification for the registration exercise well uh, we caught up with Deputy Chairperson of the Electoral Commission, Dr. Boss Manasari, days ago, who told us precisely what the problem of the Ghana card, uh, I mean, what problem the Ghana card will solve in terms of the continuous registration exercise. He's also been touching on the decision of the Electoral Commission to roll out a continuous registration exercise. Uh, for the sake of our audience, let me put it very bluntly that this is not true. The EC has never said anywhere that we will be compiling a new register and that we are going to require additional $18 million from Parliament to be able to do that. However, what the EC has been saying is that since the 2020 mass registration, as the EC has said, we don't foresee us compiling a new voters register again. We don't foresee doing that again for many, many years to come. And that the EC recently has made it very clear that we are going to conduct what we call the continuous registration of voters. And what that continuous registration of voters actually imply is that now we have the register, we have over 17 million people who are registered, almost 17 million, 27,000 Ghanaians on our roll. Mm -hmm. Those numbers are intact, all their details are intact, and uh, their information biometric, all the information, the facial features. Mm -hmm everything is intact. So what the commission is going to do, hopefully by the end of this year, is to roll out the continuous. And the continuous basically means those who did not get the chance to register in 2020, although they had turned the age of 18, mm -hmm. but they didn't get the chance or they were not even in the country at the time of the registration. And for those who turned 18 after the registration exercise, I think the registration exercise ended somewhere in August although we did some limited exercises uh, after that. It ended that time, those, all those who turned 18, 
So let's say you turned 18 in uh, September last year, November uh, November in 2020, right. September in 2020. And all those who turned 18 last year, and currently those who have turned 18 in this year, mm -hmm. and those who are as we are speaking now. Right. So people, once you turn 18, you can go ahead. <laughs> and, and what and we are register. basically mm -hmm. saying is that people should just go and get their Ghana card. Mm -hmm. And that's the document we've sent to well, Parliament. We'll talk about the issue about the Ghana card mm -hmm. shortly, but on the claims that you're asking for fresh funding to compile a new register. Even if you're not asking for the funds, you do agree that the continuous registration exercise will demand some resources? No, it will not. It will not the continuous registration exercise takes place at our district offices. But that, that would certainly come up. No, it, it, does, it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't demand any cost because we have the equipment already. The equipment for registration are there and we have our offices on the ground. So it's part of our daily administrative work. So when you go to our district office now, let's say, let's look at Ayawaso West, Ayawaso, uh, the, uh, the of, uh, constituency right. where Legon. Right. Uh, when you go there now, we have a, a, a municipal officer, mm -hmm. a deputy municipal officer. We have a secretary. And these three people are there to do that when we start. So you're, it's not, not, you're not recruiting additional No, we are not recruiting do, additional personnel. What, what did you lay in parliament? And how is it the case that such a, a very well-organized groups of, of MPs would say, well, they are getting a sense that you're asking for more money to compile in your You, you know, uh, uh, the, the parliament has a committee called the Special Budget Committee. Right. And the Special Budget Committee, I see that committee as uh, uh, perhaps the, the single most important. All the committees are very important, but when it comes to financial issues, they... Uh, handle the, uh, they right. handle that. And they, we, the EC is accountable to the Parliament of Ghana, but we do it directly through the uh, Special Budget Committee. Usually, when we will undertake such a major exercise, you go to them to explain to them that, oh, next year in 2023, this is what we are going to do. So we will require this amount of money. Mm. And they may end up pushing the Ministry of Finance to Plan. ensure that those funds are released. And last year, we didn't do that. We didn't go to them that we'll be compiling a new voters register, which will require additional amount of money. So for the continuous, as I said, we have our, our staff in the office. It will not require. If even it will require, it means where we don't have the full complement. As, as I so, speak so now, is that why you're asking for the 80 million or there's no, no, we, amount, we, there's there's no, no am amount you're asking we are, there's no amount we are special asking. budget? And well, 80 million in, in Ghana cities now will be about... 400 and almost almost yeah. 500 million, million. So and our budget for this year is not even up to 20% uh, of that so clearly there is no truth to that but what setting is that you would definitely go ahead with a continuous registration exercise so what's going to be the requirement and what are the timelines that you're C dealing with uh, currently we've sent the document the uh, CI on the registration of voters to Parliament and what the Commission based on interactions with our, our political parties as well as civil society. You know, IPAC is made up of the EC and Polka parties, but we have civil society organizations that have observer status. We, have, we had plenty of discussions with them. And last year, too, we had a, a meeting in one of the hotels of the Polka parties, civil society, for two days. And it was agreed that uh, we, well, now that the Ghana card has, has, has made a lot of impact in our society, as we speak now, almost 17 million of our people, of Ghanaians, have registered for the Ghana card. So the commission in collaboration with our, our partners took the decision that now let's have the Ghana card as the main requirement. So what this means is that as soon as you acquire your Ghana card with the continuous registration, you just go to our district office, the, the district where you are located. So let's say you are you reside in, let's say Tema, right. Tema Central. As soon as you acquire your Ghana card, then you go to our, our office in Tema Central, then you go and register, then your name will be put on the roll of voters. Basically, that's what we are doing. And you know, the Ghana card is acquired at the age of 15, based on the information they put out there. Yeah. So what we are saying is that we should encourage people, go ahead and get your Ghana card. As soon as you turn 18, then you present it to the registration officer, and instantly you are going to be registered.
That's the position of the Electoral Commission. Well, a former chairperson of that commission, Dr. Farijan, is advising his outfit against using the national identification card known as the Ghana card as the sole requirement for voting in the 2024 elections. Uh, let me just bring you some of the concerns. This is exclusive to uh, the daily graphic, uh, which we are uh, getting excerpts of that quote from in terms of his concerns. So let's start off with the issue of the Ghana card. Dr. Farijan is pointing out, first of all, uh, that Ghanaian citizens don't lose their citizenship if they are 18 years or older but do not have the Ghana card. So it goes without saying that why is the Ghana card the only means of identification for the purposes of establishing eligibility to register to vote? That's his first concern with the Electoral Commission. Then he's raising another point, um, which we'll show to you shortly pointing to the issue of the points for registration, doing the continuous registration exercise. From what we're getting from the Deputy Commissioner, it's clear that the district offices will become a launch pad where that continuous registration exercise may take place. And Farijan is pointing out at this point that that may be problematic because of the issue of access. So in his view, one way to dodge the problem is to use the voter's registration and uh, this is not the polling specific um, approach when we decide to go with the district offices for the continuous registration exercise. So you may have a lot of people who are far away who may not have access to these centers. There's the issue about the creation of the constituency uh, voters role and the polling station voter role, which is contained in part of the reforms and proposals that's coming through from the Electoral Commission. Uh, Dr. Farijan is also raising the concern about a possible issue of multiple voting when it comes to that approach. Because for him, quote, until such a time that the BVDs, and, and that's the biometric verification devices, are configured to be interactive in this way, uh, that problem will be solved. Because my concern about any of the two registers being used at the polling station on election day is that it opens the door more widely to the two kinds of voting infractions, namely multiple voting and ballot staffing, because according to him, the machines are not able to tell if you have already participated in the exercise. And therefore, when you come claiming that you are on the other row, you may get another chance to participate in the exercise. It's part of the concerns that Dr. Farijan is raising. So let's break down all of this to you and get some reactions to this uh, fortunate to be having lawyer abraham amaliba lead uh, or head of the ndc's legal team joining us uh, via zoom good afternoon to you sir. thank you so much for joining us here on the polls but just before we come to you let's deal briefly with the figures isaac kofi aj is with our research desk he's been looking at the projections in terms of the ghana card and how many people will turn 18 by 2024 so kofi take us away first of all on the issue of the Ghana card. How many people are we estimating will turn 18 by 2023, 2024 as we're heading for the next general elections? Right, Blessed. So the 2021 population and housing census, obviously we cannot have the entire 30.8 million Ghanaians going to the polls 2024. And so the most important thing is those who are 18 years and above. But currently we have a population that has 19.9 million you know, Ghanaians being 15 and above. This simply means that for you to turn 18 years by 2024, you need to be at least 15 by 2021. And so we did the math. There are over, you know, some, some a little over 2 million Ghanaians who are currently 15 years or will be, you know, 18 years by 2024. And so we have a population 19 point, you know, 9 million who are 15 years and above. Let's link this uh, to the Ghana card. We know a little over 16.9 million people have been able to register uh, for the Ghana card, but to the number of people who have their cards or the number of cards issue is around 15.7 uh, million. This means that this leaves close to, you know, uh, 4.2 million Ghanaians who currently do not have a valid Ghana card at the moment. That's a striking figure. So let's try and get the balance here. Is the NIA assuring, and from the projections that we've seen, are we setting that the NIA will be able to meet that target of registering some 4.2 million more people 
before 2024, looking at the trend? Well, Blaise, we, we know the, the Ghana card has been actually linked uh, with the, the SIM card re-registration. And the NIA, they have given us uh, the aware that by end September, they'll be able to you know, register some 2 million Ghanaians onto the Ghana card. So this simply means that by 20, uh, you know, uh, September this year, we'll have 2 million addition to the Ghana card. And if that, we add that to the, the 16.9 um, you know, total number of Ghana cards registered, that will bring us to some 18, you know, 0.9 million people. Where we will still be left with about, you know, a little over 1 million people who will still not have their Ghana cards. But we are hoping that by 2024, you know, we have all the, all other, you know, um, um, age groups on the Ghana card 15 years. So, so worst case scenario, if that does not happen, the EC is doomed. Exactly. Right, 4.2 million because potential. You, you cannot disenfranchise some people. Interesting. 4.2 million. All of them must be on the Ghana card by 2020. Well, Isaac Kofi AJ there with our research desk. Let me bring in lawyer Abraham Maliba at this point. Um, so you've been watching the figures as well and also the proposed CI before Parliament. What's your initial reaction to what we're learning from, uh, from, from the likes of uh, Dr. Farijan on this, saying that, well, a potential two, three, four million Ghanaians may be disenfranchised? Well, so let me start by saying good evening to your viewers. Um, all over the world, election management bodies have the responsibility to ensure that a good number of their citizens, majority of them, are on the election register to ensure that they are not disenfranchised. The decision by the EC to solely use the Ghana card knowing very well that the Ghana card is not available now to every Ghanaian, and we are not sure that by 2024 it will be available to every Ghanaian, is for me an affront to the Constitution. Article 42 is clear on the eligibility of uh, persons who would want to register and vote. It says that, one, you must be a Ghanaian, two, you must be of sound mind, and three, you must be 18 or above. So, Basic, first and foremost, you are a Ghanaian before acquiring the card. It is not the card that will make you a Ghanaian. And so if you are a Ghanaian and you are desirous to have your name on the list to vote, the Ghana card should not be used to disenfranchise you. There's, the reason I'm making this point is that the Ghana card is not available for every Ghanaian. So is there a way? that we can resort to other cars to ensure that Ghanaians who are desirous to have their name on the register can go ahead to register and vote. But to use solely the Ghana card, for me, is an attempt to, as it were, disenfranchise people by using the Ghana card as a sole document. And I think that that will fly in the face of Article 4. That would be very presumptive because the Electoral Commission has been giving us explanations as to why they're deciding to go with that system. The issue has come up. And you have also been concerned as the NDC about the integrity of the electoral rule, the fact that the Garanta system has some defects, you agree? Yes. And I'm not saying that we should use the Garanta system. I've indicated to you right now that can we use other forms of uh, identification? Why? Don't we have a driver's license? Is it not also biometric? Don't we have the, 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 the passport? Is that not bi biometric? And so by just using the Ghana card, when indeed, just last week, we had a head where they are talking about cutting off the, 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 the people who cannot use Ghana card to register their SIM, by September, they are not sure that they will be able to provide Ghana card for all Ghanaians to be able to register their SIMs. If we use that as a basis to, to, to determine whether the EC will be, uh, the, whether the NIA will be able to provide Ghana cards, I'm sure we'll come to a conclusion that that is going to be difficult. So I'm saying that, can we resort to other forms of identification? Which will augment the Ghana card. That's my point. 
Uh, but then for the NDC, what, what, what are the alternatives for you, uh, aside the Ghana card? Clearly, we have the, the, the voter, the, 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 the driving's license, which is available. We could also use the um, passport, which is available to most Ghanaians. And so, if we put together all these three cars, then chances are that you have a good number of Ghanaian cars. When we know the challenges associated with it, procuring the Ghana card, that for me is a recipe for saying that you don't want some Ghanaians to get onto the register. Because the Ghana card is not available to everyone, and you are aware of this. So to eliminate, we can make... Yeah, but, but uh, j just, just recently, the General Secretary was with us here in studio, pointing out to the fact that um, eventually, that's where you agree you all uh, head to. Uh, and we've heard that from Dr. Basman Asari also indicating that together there was a meeting that was held, uh, the political parties were present, and, and you have somehow agreed in principle that eventually the Ghana card is, is, is what you would rely on in terms of identifying uh, persons who are eligible. False. That is false. The NDC has never agreed to that. Uh, the NDC has never agreed to that. Don't Okay, the NDC has walked I don't know which meeting Dr. Boswell is talking about. The NDC was not part of it. Uh, we seem to be having some challenges, so we'll try as much as possible to um, raise um, Dr. Maliba on phone so uh, we, we get some clarity to the matters he's pointing out uh, clearly. But, but once more, for those of you who are uh, just um, wondering what it is that Dr. Uh, Afarijan has been pointing out to, uh, he has been uh, pointing out some concerns about the exercise, raising a number of issues. We could just uh, bring some more of the concerns he's been raising uh, to you, starting off with this issue about the use of uh, the Ghana card. But uh, doc, uh, let me bring in lawyer Maliba, who's joining us uh, via phone now. Um, so I hope we have a stable connection. You were pointing out that, uh, in principle, you did not agree with the EC that the Ghana card be, be used eventually uh, as that source of identification. Yeah, there was no such meeting where NDC attended. Um, you are aware that the NDC has worked with IPAC for a long time now. And so for Dr. Bosman to make a political statement that the NDC agreed to such a meeting. I want him to produce a um, minutes of such meetings. Yeah, he didn't mention the NDC, but he says, I mean, there was a meeting between you and the political party. So probably if you boycott that meeting, that's to your own peril, isn't it, as a political party? Well, so he should make it uh, clear that the NDC did not attend. But that does not take the, uh, away the fact that we are still a stakeholder in the electoral process. And um, uh, for him to then throw out uh, the, the news out there that we were part of it is not true. So, so what instructions are you giving, for instance, to your MPs in Parliament about the CI that has been laid before the House? Um, what action are they to take on this? Well, the MPs would um, lead to the party. The party would want to actually find out from the EC and for that matter, by extension, the NIA, to provide us with the number of people who have registered in various uh, parts of this country. We we'll want to know the number of people, for instance, who have registered, uh, gotten their names onto the NIA register uh, in the Ashanti region, in all the regions, so that we will know uh, how many people have the Ghana card. From there, we will be able to determine whether or not the Ghana card can be used as a sole document for registration. You have been criticized as being part of the problem, the fact that the NDC uh, encourage some of your followers not to even register for the NIA cards in the first place. So, you agree you're part of the problem we're facing now? How is that? Uh, when you go to the Ashanti region, there are a huge number of people who have been complaining that they, 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 they did the registration for the past three years, but you've not procured their cards. Are you going to say that uh, the NDC that asked them not to register in the Ashanti region, in the stronghold of the MPP? So, even in the stronghold of the MPP, the citizens there are also complaining that the process has been so slow that it's difficult 
after registering to even procure your card, apart from the long queues that we see. And so uh, to say that it's the NDC that has caused this, uh, I think uh, uh, it's below the belt because the NDC has no influence, for instance, over the electorate in the Ashanti region. It's solely an MPP stronghold. So how come that even in the Ashanti region we have complaints, if that were the case? Yes, but, but, but you are also being warned by some experts that if you do not take immediate steps to deal with this, um, you, you could have that affecting your electoral fortunes in 2024 because um, with or without the NDC, I guess the constitutional instrument will be applied. Well, um, the, uh, that is to say that um, if Parliament decides to pass the, the CI, um, we have our members in Parliament, they will raise the issues in Parliament. Uh, you know the EC has time with our number, redrawn CIs, and have gone ahead to amend and do the right things. And so our members in Parliament would be up to their responsibility to ensure that the right things are done. Um, we are not against the EC going ahead to ensure that it uh, is able to compile a register. What we are saying is that you can compile this register without saying that it is solely the Ghana card. And so that's where we are. We are not against the compilation of a new register. And so uh, it is for the EC to also listen to um, political parties. The days that uh, the EC will say that what it says is final should be a thing of the past and begin to listen to the political parties when they raise issues uh, for them to pay attention to. Uh, Dr. Farijan is also pointing out that in, as part of the proposals, there are some defects with the proposal to have two registers, the constituency um, role and then that of the electoral area. Uh, how much of a challenge will it be to you also as a political party? He's saying there could be implications, um, for instance, we could have multiple voting going on. I didn't get that. Uh, is he saying that there's going to be two? Yes, that, that decision to, to, to split the electoral role further into two. So you have the, the constituency electoral role and that of the electoral area. Um, um, constituency and electoral area register, is that what they are going to do? Yeah, precisely the proposal, yes. I find it difficult to understand why they would want to do that because. Um, uh, we vote in accordance with uh, constituencies. I don't think we vote in accordance with uh, electoral areas. And that is why when you are voting, you vote for a member of parliament who is responsible for a constituency and not a member of parliament who is responsible for an electoral area. Um, if it's not broken, why do you, why do you try to fix it? Uh, uh, the current system we have, where we have registered for constituencies, is what we have all known. But so I would want to find out from the EC why you now want to create a register for an electoral area. That doesn't sound like a, a, a reasonable thing to do at all. Mm. So if the Ghana card would not solve the problem, and you, you, you seem to also be having some challenges with even the registration process, what then would deal effectively um, with the credibility concerns you usually have as political parties um, whenever we are compiling a new voters register? Look, we, I heard Bosman talk about continuous registration. Yes, NDC is out for a continuous registration. We have agreed to that. Uh, this was something that the NDC agreed to even during the days of uh, Afarijan. And we had cause to even complain why that has not been implemented. And if now the EC wants to implement that, we are all out for that. The days that you have people queuing and going to Sleep over at regional centers must be a thing of the past. So we agree to that. But we are saying that the documents that you need or the, the, the identification document that you need to authenticate a person's citizen shouldn't just be the Ghana card. And you are aware, and I'm also aware, that the Ghana card is not simply available to all. Look, one day, MPP were having their election. I heard Dr. Trubokoku indicate that if you were approaching the 
the, the, the center to vote or you are going to the polling booth to vote, you must produce an identity card that will authenticate that you are the one. And he said that any national identity card. That was the, at the MPP um, National Executive Congress. Yes, but I, I guess it's because the laws have not taken effect yet. Could that not be the reason why? <laughs> so if the EC itself did not insist that it should be Ghana card at that, at that conference and indicated that it should be any national identity card, why are we now trying to, 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 to uh, title the situation and make only those who have the Ghana card? Why do we know that majority of Ghanaians still don't have the Ghana card? You, your, your, your colleague just did a tabulation and realized that about 4.2 million don't have the Ghana card now. And uh, by September, if another 2 million are put onto the register, we still have some 2 million still left. Why should a whooping 2 million of our citizens be left out when they are desirous to be part of the register and vote? So I am saying that election management bodies throughout the country, uh, throughout the world, their always desire is to ensure that anybody who is eligible as a citizen is eligible to be on register and is, is desirous to be on register, that person is facilitated to have his name on the register. But in our case, we are increasingly seeing the DC itself trying to disenfranchise people by putting in place systems that would ensure that citizens are not on board. And that is where I have a problem with. The EC should rather be uh, looking at inclusiveness, looking at expanding the, the, the frontier so that more people can be on the register, rather than having a few people going to the pools to, as it were, elect people for all mm. of it. Uh, if, if this goes ahead and is adopted in Parliament, are we likely to see the NDC head to court over this, uh, the, the point that the NIA will be that sole requirement. Are you considering that uh, as, as the legal department of the NDC? Look, in a, in a serious democracy, no, no, no legal system will allow this to, to fly. Where if it is one person who has been disenfranchised, no legal system will allow this to have its way. And when we get there, we shall call the... Yes, but, but I'm being specific with the point three, which you're arguing that once you turn 18, it's not the NIA card or the Ghana card that will decide your citizenship. Will the NDC go to court over these concerns? And I'm saying that this is a collective issue. I may be the head of the uh, legal team, but it takes a collective issue mm. by the entire legal team to advise the party. All right, then. But I'm grateful. My stand is that uh, if that goes on, if the Ghana card is used, then it flies in the face of Article 42 of the Constitution. Lawyer Abraham Amaliba, thank you for joining us here on The Pulse. The Tanker Drivers Union uh, have reversed their decision to withdraw services across the country as drivers struggle to fuel their vehicles owing to petrol shortage at many of the fuel outlets in Accra. Now for the drivers, the situation, if not checked, could be devastating uh, for them. My colleague Michael Papania Shali has been visiting some of the outlets. What we are understanding is that there's fuel shortage at many of the uh, OMCs and their outlets here. We are currently in Abeka La Paz. This gold station, we are told, uh, has been out of petrol particularly for two days now, since Thursday, August. Uh, um, we'll, we'll try to speak to some of the drivers. Like this driver here, we are told that uh, they've had to uh, roam unsuccessfully trying to look for good quality oil, uh, fuel. Uh, to, uh, please, what's your name? My name is Bernard Ampiao. Okay, Bernard, so how long have you been trying to look for fuel? For the past three days now, I've been here trying to buy fuel. Normally what I do is, uh, early in the morning, I fill my tank before starting work. But for the past three days, I've been here coming in the morning, in the evening, I don't get some to buy. I don't know the reason why. But I heard that maybe they have these tankers drivers have problem concerning their payments and those things. So I think, and even uh, today I heard that they've called off the strike. Uh, but uh, I'm still hoping and that they, they bring us fuel because I normally buy oil. Okay. Yeah. Let me ask you, how disturbing is this for you? Oh, really? It has really been unbearable because uh, you know if you don't get it here, then it means you have to drive through a whole lot of places before you can get a fuel. I only buy oil. That is it, yeah. 
But how many outlets have you been to? Uh, like six. Yes. And all of them tell you the same thing. They don't have yes, petrol. The same, the, the same thing. They don't have petrol. Wow. They only have diesel. They don't so, have so at this point, what, what do you want to be done? Because you need it to also do some work. Yes. Yeah, so what I have to do is uh, I have to look out for other four stations. The people that they have, they just purchase it from there. Bernard, let me thank you very much. Uh, so Bernard is one of many who have been searching through um, town, hoping to get some fuel to buy, particularly petrol. But just now he's been turned away because this particular station, like many others, have told him that there's no fuel uh, to buy. There's some more vehicles coming through, all have been told nearly the same response that there's no fuel um, here but there's no uh, um, signboard displaying to tell drivers who are also in the same situation whether there's fuel or not they would have to drive uh, into the station and later try to find out whether they have fuel um, or not it's a devastating moment for drivers especially for online drivers and commercial drivers taxis and trotters who depend on this as an input for the work that they do. They can only hope that uh, a solution to the concerns of the tanker drivers will be found as soon as possible. For Joy News, Michael Ashali. Well, a couple of hours ago, a statement has been released to that effect by the Labour Union, indicating that it will now resume services across the country after a series of meetings with stakeholders and further engagements, as we understand, are expected in the coming days. So let's tell you more about the uh, indications we're getting from the tanker drivers. Um, we'll uh, definitely bring that to you. But uh, let's now speak to uh, Peter Tekba, who's uh, a policy analyst, uh, monitoring the developments uh, there uh, and also the statement we're receiving from the tanker drivers. So, Peter, for you, um, how long will it take for the situation to normalize? At least we are getting that indication uh, from the fuel uh, tanker drivers. Uh, Mr. Tepe, you yes, uh, I was asking about how long th th this will take for, for issues to normalize. Well, it depends on the negotiation and um, who is agreeing to what and who is uh, also uh, not agreeing to what. It depends on how the negotiation goes. You know, these tanker drivers play a very critical role. And so for us to say when is this going to normalize, it actually depends on what they are asking for and what government position is on this as well. So that is very critical. Uh, initially, but w we know that they were joining in that, that solidarity over the um, decision, the cabinet decision not to expand uh, LPG stations across the country. And, and that's part of the demand. Now, there's some level of consensus and they are resuming their services. Uh, but then the impact also on the prices and how soon we are expecting that these issues will normalize. Well, you know, indeed, it will not take one day for it to be normalized because it has to go through a, I mean, some level of processes. And so, yes, there was a ban, but you know, it will take some time to mobilize, it will take some time to organize resources to be able to actually get the station running. Um, uh, 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 the various uh, 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 stakeholders like uh, the authorities that regulate them will have to go and inspect to find out whether everything is in order because there was a reason why this ban took place. And so we have to make sure that once the, the ban is lifted, people don't just get up and just start, I mean, uh, doing business, but rather they follow the safety protocol that needs to be done strictly to ensure that if there's even any occurrence, it doesn't result in that kind of fatality that we, that we saw. And so it will have to take some process. And then it's good that these people are actually taking through a lot of training to understand the impact of their work mm. on the populace and the uh, public as well. And so it is not something that can just take one day to, to resolve. It will take a process. And that process, depending on how fast we are able to get things along, then definitely mm. we should expect that more right. stations will be open in the coming days. And, and they're resuming their services at the time where, of course, um, we've also been paying attention to the exchange rate. Um, it appears that the city is not performing uh, as, as it should, I mean, as many citizens are expecting. Uh, so what's likely to be 
complicating that matter? Uh, would it be the, the CD depreciation or perhaps just a simple issue of uh, the natural market cycle? Well, it's a mixture of both, but unfortunately, when one aspect seems to be getting better, then another thing also comes in. And if you look at it, the CD depreciation is very critical. And unfortunately, uh, when we expect that things will normalize for prices to go down, then the CD has taken a trend that nobody actually uh, tried to understand. Mm. And so we are hoping that uh, government will actually step in. It, it, all these things requires what government strategy is. And I think that the silence of government is also not helping matters because we expect that there should be some level of communication to actually I mean, tell the public what is being done to address the situation. But currently, as we speak, we don't have any information from the Ministry of Finance, for instance, to know what is being done. And I think when this information is put out, out there, it helps to, I mean, get people to understand. If this thing is about speculation. So when there is silence, everybody tends to speculate, everybody tends to do something, everybody tends to do mm. their own, say everything. But when there's some communication, then all communication is pointed towards that communication from the authorities that mm. I mean, right. And, and at this point, what, what will be your expectation from government? Uh, to, just that you're pointing out that you, there are some a raft of measures that, that needs to be deployed immediately. Yes. Yeah, so when it comes to city depreciation, we all know that, I mean, uh, it depends on the reserves of the central bank. Or it also depends on what we are getting from, I mean, uh, offshore players or inflows from, 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 from the external parties. So what I expect government to do is to come out to tell us that in the coming days, what we should expect such that this will normalize. So if nothing is being done, then what everybody will say is that it means there's no hope. It means we don't know what is coming, what is ahead. But if government should come up to say that, look, in the coming days, we expect this amount of money coming in. This is what we are putting in place. And that by this timeline, we should expect this coming in. Then all the speculators will now be geared towards that. Then they know that, look, if we don't quickly get our strategy reorganized, it will get to a time where what we are avoiding now. We can't get it. Because if somebody tells you that there's no dollar in the system, there is. But just because the government is not coming out to say anything, those who have it are just holding it. Because they are business women. And so that, that's why that information is very critical from the side of the government to help control that kind of speculation that is causing what we are experiencing now. And so information from government is very, very important. You remember that when Bank of Ghana came up with this well, I mean, measures that they said that ABC is going to be done, they are expecting some money, at least that alone caused some stability in the system. That is what we want now, that there should be some definite, I mean, uh, 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 measures by government to be put out there. Then mm. all discussion will be moving around that place. At least it will help to minimize the rate at which the city is falling. Other than that, um, unfortunately, we should see uh, further depreciation in the coming days if government continues to be silent. I mean, anytime this happens, it's as though the OMCs don't feel the impact. Is that um, a, a correct notion to have? Are you saying that the OMCs don't face the impact? It, it, well, the, normally it's as though, I mean, because of the essential nature of products that, that they produce, it's as though when, when they shut their outlets, weighing the comparative... Uh, impact. It's as though the OMCs don't, don't really get affected as much. Is, is that a correct notion to hold? No, they do. Just that this business, their business is a cash business. So mm -hmm. every day, money, no majority of Ghanaians go to the pumps to buy coal with cash. And so every day they are making money. And normally, when you don't sell in a particular day, of course, you are losing. Just that they know that because it's a commodity in high demand, when they turn down today, tomorrow, when they open, people will feel rush and go and buy. And so, even though they feel the impact, um, because they, have, they, they, they know what they want to achieve, that is, that is why it looks as if they, 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 they are indifferent, but not at all. It is actual impact. Don't forget that they also buy this product at a cost. Mm. And so, depending on how fast you sell, it determines how much you're also going to buy. Because... If you go to the station and you have product in your tank right. and you don't sell, when price goes up, you are when when price goes down, you are affected. And now that we can see that right, world market price is coming down, I mean gradually. If the city strengthens tomorrow and it drops, it means that you bought it at a higher cost. And so if you don't sell now and prices go down, you are going to. That is why it is good that the, when you, you are in this business, 
once you get a stock, you sell it quickly to be able to turn around. Then when it happens like that, then you are in good business. But of course, it's something that every day people buy. And so one day, two days, yeah. do not happen. They are always in business, I guess. Always will be there. Always yeah. be there. Because it's cash business. It's, it's cash business. And so they will always laugh at the end of the day. Because right. of, of right. course, what you have to understand, the margin is also critical. And in times like this, Nobody can be making fat margin because everybody is sacrificing. Mm. Uh, let's talk about the outlook finally uh, and what's looking like for consumers. Well, when you talk of stock, I think that um, situations are normalized in terms of availability of the product. The only opportunity thing is that the price. You know, some time ago, we were talking about government moving taxes. Now we have come to understand that even if government should remove all the taxes, that wouldn't have been the solution to the problem. Because the two key things, the world price and the exchange rate. Unfortunately, we have the world price coming down. Then the city has taken another train again. So the question is that at what point are we going to get this bit off? Then it means that our government needs a deliberate policy to be able to manage our effort. Because that is the key driver of what is happening. So even if the rate comes down today, the, 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 the prices at the pump will not come down the way we expected. Because the city is taking a certain train that now nobody can Tell tomorrow you can wake up and the city can get another one. We started this, I mean, great ULS with the city mm. about three cities with 20 pesos. Today we are above nine. Right. If you know, if the city will cross nine. The reality is that the city has crossed nine. Mm. And there needs to be a deliberate policy by government to manage effects. That is why government timely information into the market will help address the issue. Other than uh, being silent and get to a certain level before we come. That is because when the dollar crosses certain threshold, it's difficult for us to come down. Mm. That is unfortunate. That's why government needs to be proactive in putting out information that will not allow us to cross certain threshold. Other than that, we will end up ending the year at, 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 at double digit, which we don't expect that. All right, then. I'm grateful, um, Peter Tech, but these are energy. Policy analyst joining us here on.